Brock Faber signed a long-term extension with the Minnesota Wild, eight year by eight point five million dollars a year. I I think this is a good deal for the Wild. It's great. It's great. You know, you're getting. You know, he had an awesome year. Arguably, he could have been Rookie of the Year last year. You know, you can argue that what he did as a rookie defenseman was might be a little bit more impressive than what Bedard did as a forward because th- being a rookie defenseman is a lot harder than being a rookie forward, but Bedard was also on the worst team, probably the worst of the second worst team in the league, and he pretty much put the team on his back. But, you know, Brock Faber, I think he's only going to get up from here. You know, I, that's what a lot of teams are starting to do with, like, these young defensemen. Like, fr- they, they seem as a kind of franchise defenseman. The Senators did that with Jake Sanderson, gave him eight-year deal. I think it was just over $8 million. If I, it's like, it's like, I think Jake it's like Sanders, 8.0. Yeah. yeah. And the Owen Power got a long-term deal with the Sabres, another one just over $8 million. I find it interesting that Faber got more than Sanderson and power mm-hmm. um i'm not surprised though yeah i mean the market goes up the salary cap goes up but i really like what the wild are doing i've been saying this i think since last summer once those parisi and Suter contracts like this is the last year they're gonna have it's like 12 million dollars dead cap for between the two of them i believe next year it goes down to like two or three million dollars combined have money to play with you know the next thing the wild need to probably do is they need to get caprice off extended again because i believe Either next year or the year after, his contract's coming up soon. I think I believe they planned it that way, though, because they knew these contracts were coming off the books, and they could give Kaprizov even more money, you know, because he is the franchise player for that team. And I, I, I feel like they'll get that done. Um, but I, I think the Wild are building something special. I don't know. I think they might be a year or two away from the playoffs. Still, wouldn't shock me if they're competing for a wild card spot this year. But you know, I love what Bill Guerin's doing with the Wild. I think he's making a lot of really smart, calculated moves. You know, they've been drafting well, and once they have some money to spend, it wouldn't shock me if they kind of went crazy in free agency in the next couple of years. You know, get Caprice off, locked up to that long term deal, and I, I could see them being a cup contender in two or three years. Can you bring up the roster real quick? Because yeah. the Minnesota Wild are doing something that they've been mid for so long ever since they bought out Parise and Suter. And I mean, they were mid when they had Parise and Suter. They were like make the playoffs every year. But and then like, get the furthest before, they ever got was the second round. They've never gotten to the conference finals at all? No, they did. They got like, in the, it was like their second or third year okay. in the league. They had Marion Gabrick. Marion Gabrick. I, I don't think a lot of people remember how he was crazy when he was on the Wild. He was. He was still, still might be one of the best players, if not the best player the Wild franchise has ever had. That's kind. Of, honestly, I kind of forgot about Bro Loki. Um, but the Brock Faber contract, you compared it to the Sanderson and Owen Power contract. I'm totally with that. The Minnesota Wilders team have Philip Gustafson coming up as a goaltender who is expecting to make a huge jump with Marc Andre Fleury looking to be the backup. I mean, this team right now, like they they're gonna put the puck in the back of the net, and if Philip Gustafson can get back to how he played two a season uh, two seasons ago in 2023, uh, sorry, 20 yeah 2023. This team could be good, and this is why I have the Wild making the playoffs. I still think they're a year away. I think at least a year away. I mean, just looking at their roster, I like the forward group they have. They have a good mix of younger players and some veterans. Their decor is, I think, a bit of a sour spot still. You know, Brock Faber is the youngest defenseman on that team by a, a long shot. He's 21 years old. But then the rest of the defensemen are all over the age of 30 except for Jake Middleton. So, you know, they're, you know, Jarek Spurgeon, their captain, you know, like give Bogosian a two year contract, decent veteran, John Merrill as well. But, you know, they, I think they still got a little bit of work to do. They got to get a little bit younger defensively. But, you know, Brock Faber, is, they see as that, you know, that franchise number one defenseman, you know, obviously they, they think that and they give him an eight year deal, you know, yeah, Krill the Thrill, Caprice off, you know, awesome play. I really like Matt Boldy too. He's entering the first year of his long-term deal. Matt Boldy, he was like low-key one of my, my goats in my fantasy team. Like, he, he, He's the reason why I ended up winning the championship last year in my fantasy hockey. Stud. Joel Erickson X, a very underrated center in my opinion. You know, Max Zuccarello, still a great player at 36. I think he's a really good fit in that wild card team. And then you got some good, like, tougher players like Marcus Foligno, Ryan Hartman. And then you got some young guys like uh, Marco Rossi, you know, He's still, you know, developing as a player. You know, I could see him being like a good second line, third line player. But I really like what the Wild are doing. I, I still think they're a year away, at least from being a playoff team. If they miss the playoffs this season, I won't be shocked. But this team underperformed mightily. They were without their captain, Jared Spurgeon, for most of last season yeah. after leaving the season early with the season-ending injury. But we'll see because he's 34, coming back from a... I, 
I don't know if it was an upper or lower body injury, but either way, it's going to take him longer to heal. And is he going to come back and be the same form that he was beforehand? Yeah. I don't know. That's a question mark. But yeah. again, like if they, the X factor is going to be Philip Gustafson, but this Minnesota Wild team has the makings to be a wild card team. Probably going to be first round exit, but they can sneak in, especially. I, with- I, I could see them competing. I don't know if they'll be a wild card team, but I definitely see them like they're going to be in that mix. The Minnesota Wild, there's going to be two things that's going to happen. Either A, they're going to somehow squeak in with like 95, 100 points, or B, they're going to be at 82 or 84. They're not going to be in the in-between range, I think. This is a team where they're either going to get in or they're going to completely whiff and just miss out. I mean, they kind of were in the conversation for a good part of the year. Towards the end of the season, they kind of fell off. I think they missed the playoffs by around 10, 15 points. I think they had like... 80 points to 84. They, had, they didn't have a bad year. I mean, they're, they're still developing. You know, they're clearly not a cup contender right now. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, looking at, yeah, so this year, $14 million, $14.7 million in dead cap from Ryan Suter and Zach Parise. And then next year goes down with 1.6. So you're getting an extra $13 million in cap space next year. They're going to go crazy with it. Yeah, well, I, I think, yeah, I think the priority number one next summer has to be getting Caprice off signed or a long-term deal. You that get, has to be priority number one. I won't, how much money do we think he gets a year? Because he's going to get an eight-year deal. But I don't know if he'll sign an eight-year deal. I'm sure they'll offer it. I can see him getting like around $10, $11 million. Ooh, $10 million, I think, is the sweet spot for Caprice off. Yeah. I'm off, I'm off the boat of overpaying players now with the cap going up dramatically the next I mean, when you, have a, me when, you have, when you have a player like Kirill Kaprizov, you, you, you pay him what you, 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 he deserves. And he's already making 9 mil right now. Yeah, I mean, he's your best player. He had 96 points last year, 75 games. You know, you, you do whatever you can to keep him around. You know, I remember before he signed this, this contract he's playing on now, there was a lot of talk about whether he was going to go back to Russia or not. You know, and they weren't sure if he was going to sign that long-term deal. He did end up signing it, uh, but I think Krill is an awesome player, and the Wild need to do whatever they can to keep him around long-term. Thank you guys so much for staying to the end of the video. We really appreciate you watching all the way to the end. If you enjoy our content, uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button, drop a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to keep this conversation going, be sure to check out our Discord. The link will be in the description below. Very active. We're trying to build an active community there. Talk Hockey 24-7. Also, check out our Twitter, Instagram, and TikToks. Links will be down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching.